Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Global Compliance Panel's live webinar on understanding attribute acceptance sampling, including Z1.4 and C equals O plans. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host for today's session. And on behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I'd like to thank you all for being part of today's webinar. Today's webinar is being presented by Mr. Dan O'Leary. A few words about Dan before we start off today's session. Dan's the president of Ombu Enterprises LLC, which is a company which offers training and execution in operational excellence, and they focus on analytic skills and also a systems approach to operations management. And Dan's had more than 30 years of experience in quality operations and program management in regulated industries, which includes aviation, defense, medical devices, and also clinical labs. And Dan has a master's degree in mathematics and also is an ASQ certified biomedical auditor, quality auditor, a quality engineer, a reliability engineer, and also a Six Sigma black belt holder as well. And also is certified by APICS in research management as well. And we are honored to have Dan with us today to present today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start off today's webinar, I'd like to quickly outline today's program. This webinar is for a 90-minute duration. First, Dan will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas he would cover, and then share with you his presentation. And also, would like to inform all our participants today that once part of today's teleconference, you've been placed on mute and would remain so until the Q&A begins. We have a couple of minutes at the end for your question and answers. But if you do come up with questions during the session, please post them in the Q&A panel or the chat messenger. And for any reason, if you do get logged out at today's session, please follow the same procedure to join in again. Now that we're all ready, I request Dan to take it from you. Dan? Uh, well, thank you very much, and uh, welcome, everybody, to our presentation on attribute acceptance sampling. So uh, we're going to go through the slides. And as you'll notice that um, many of the slides all but the very first one, have a, a number on the bottom of the slide. So if you have a question about a particular slide, uh, note the number, and during the question and answer session, uh, we can go back and, and address it in, in context. Now, um, we're going to look at the topics in this presentation. So uh, we're going to start with the concepts of sampling plans. Um, now, one of the things that um, I have learned in my uh, consulting experience is, is that um, this concept of sampling plans is getting to be a bit of a lost art. So um, we're going to um, look at what's going on involved in, in sampling plans. And then we're going to look at a particular one, a very common one called Z1.4. So we'll explain how that works. Um, that's going to lead us into this topic of single sampling plans. And then we're going to look at a major variation, double and multiple sampling plans. And I'll explain the difference and the advantages and disadvantages of single, double, and multiple sampling plans so that you'll have some understanding about how to um, make the choice. Um, then there is a very common set of sampling plans called the sequel zero sampling plans. They have uh, some interesting characteristics, and they're becoming uh, quite common. So we'll explain um, how they work and what's going on with the, with the SQL zero plans, and compare and contrast them with the uh, corresponding Z1.4 plan. So you'll understand some of the advantages and the disadvantages of the SQL zero sampling plans. Uh, summary and conclusion, and then we'll uh, open it up for questions. So sampling plans. So let's talk about um, this concept of, of sampling plans. And here is a typical application. Now, this is not the only way that we can use sampling plans, but um, this is going to start to illustrate uh, the concepts and issues. Um, so you just received a shipment of 5,000 widgets from a new supplier. And now you're faced with a question. Is the shipment good enough to put it into your inventory? So what we can see is that you have a new supplier, um, not a lot of history um, because they're a new supplier, but on the other hand, um, they just went through the supplier qualification program. So you have every reason to believe um, that they're going to um, ship you good stuff. Um, and so you're going to have to have some mechanism to, um, to decide whether or not uh, you've got good stuff. So here's a few approaches. 
Um, there's really three. Um, you could look at all 5,000 widgets. So we're going to call that 100% inspection. You could say, decide not to look at any of them. You're going to put the whole shipment in stock. After all, they're a new supplier. You just qualified them. How would they ever dare send you any non-conforming material? Right? Because they want long-term business with you. Um, and then the um, third case, and the one we're going to explore in more detail, is look at some of them. And enough of them are good, keep the whole lot. And that's the essence of, sample, of acceptance sampling. So we're going to develop um, sampling plans. And there's a whole bunch of questions um, that we need to address. Um, three critical ones are here. How many to inspect or test? That's going to be the sample size. How, many, how do I distinguish good from bad? Now, uh, that's not going to be an issue that we're going to be able to address in sampling plans, except um, that we're talking about attributes. So we're going to have to make the distinction between attribute sampling plans and variable um, sampling plans. And then lastly, um, I have a sample. How many good ones are enough to be able to say it is okay to put the lot into stock? So those are the issues that we're going to, uh, we're going to address. Now, we need to understand information. And so um, this is going to get us into this distinction between attributes and variables. In attributes, we're going to count things. Sorry, in attributes, we're going to classify things. Um, so a traffic light, for example, could be one of three colors, red, yellow, or green. Um, the weather could be sunny, cloudy, raining, or snowing. A part could be conforming or non-conforming. And notice what's happening here. There's only two choices for the part, and that's going to be important uh, later when we develop um, some of the underlying statistical theory. On the other hand, we have variables. Uh, we could measure things on some kind of scale. Um, the temperature of an oven is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, tire pressure is 37 pounds per square inch. Um, critical dimension of a part is 3.47 inches. So those are things that are measured on a scale. Um, and so those are variables kinds of measurements, and as opposed to the attributes kinds of measurements that, that we talked about. Now, we can convert variables to attributes, and this is very common in uh, acceptance sampling. So consider an important dimension. It's got a specification of 3.5 plus or minus 0.1 inches. And I pick up two parts, and I measure them. So these are variables. So Piece A, 3.56 inches, and it falls between the lower spec limit and the upper spec limit, and so it's conforming. On the other hand, piece B, 3.39 inches, falls below the lower spec limit. It's non-conforming. So what I've done is take the variables measurement and convert it to an attribute, conforming or non-conforming. So this attribute has got two, um, two possible values. And that's what we're going to look at with attribute sampling plans. Now, I will um, tell you that there is another class of sampling plans based upon variables. And variable sampling plans, um, you don't convert to attributes. Use the measurements directly. And so there is some savings in sample size because you retain all of the information that you got from doing the measurement. Here, you're throwing information away. You're converting the actual value of the measurement into this attribute, conforming or non-conforming. That's going to um, cost you in sample size. It's going to make the sample size go up as a result. Now, uh, we need to talk a little bit about language, because this is really important. Um, I generally tell people to avoid the words defect and defective. These are technical terms in the quality profession, and they've got very specific meaning. Unfortunately, they are also technical terms in product liability, and there they have a very different meaning. Um, and there's a colloquial meaning in ordinary languages. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you are getting sued, um, the product liability attorneys are going to uh, pounce on any use of the word defect and defective even though what you mean is it's conforming or non-conforming as a quality professional. So I encourage you to wipe out defect and defective from your quality vocabulary and use the word conforming or non-conforming. It just doesn't carry um, the connotation um, that uh, the word defect and defectives do. All right, now let's look at uh, some sampling plans. We're going to look at um, Z 
Z1.4. Um, this is the classic plan. It's the 